just want to say that I know my nails ain't done, but I soaked them off this morning because your girl has a nail appointment tomorrow afternoon, okay? Okay. <laughs> Hey, it's Janae back with another video. If you're new here, welcome. And if you are returning, hey girl, hey, make sure you take a moment to stop and subscribe, like this video, and turn your bell notifications on so you know when I post. So today I'm gonna do a quick little get ready with me, chit chat, story time, and yeah, let's just get into it. So what we're gonna talk about today, I'm gonna tell you guys about the internship turnt job that changed my life. <laughs> So let me just start my makeup really quick. I'm going to start by spraying my face with the Caudalie grape water. I almost got it in my mouth, y'all. But I'm um, starting with this because I did my skincare already this morning. So I've already done like toner, moisturizer, eye cream, all that stuff. And I don't necessarily have to do it all again. But just to like reset the moisture in my face, I want to start by spraying that water because it's super super hydrating i highly recommend that if you have dry skin um and then i'm gonna prime and i know y'all have seen me like do my makeup before so this is like nothing new this is the milk um makeup primer but even still everything will of course as always be linked in the description box below okay and then I have this thing where I'm trying to like, like all of my makeup, which I'm completely knocking over and making a mess right now, but it's on this little acrylic stand. I'm trying to make sure I put everything back as I use it, which is completely backwards because I'm doing my makeup this way, not that way. I normally do it this way because my big mirror is right here and it's easier, but I'm just trying to like stay organized y'all. <laughs> then really quick, um, I'm gonna do my eyebrows. I'll just speed that part up. Where is my eyebrow pencil? Wow, I'm making a mess. Hold up, y'all. As I've told y'all before, I always use the um, minted brow pencil. I think it's called High Brow. I think that's the title. If I'll get the right name and put it on the screen, but I think it's their High Brow Eyebrow Pencil. And um, they sent me like all the shades in PR and I just use whichever one I have like readily available. Um, and I'm out of the one that I love the most, so I need to like order it. But the one I'm gonna use today is in the shade Brow Down. So I'm just gonna quickly do this. All right, I got one brow done. So let's do the other one. Okay, so I think I'm good on my eyebrows. I'm not too like strict about my eyebrows because I like to keep them just like as natural as possible. I don't have thick eyebrows. I don't have thin eyebrows. I have normal eyebrows. My left eyebrow though, uh, I injured her when I was little. So there's a little scar in her. So there's some hair missing, but that's neither here nor there. Let's get into this story time. So um, in my more recent, most recent vlog, I can't talk today y'all. My most recent vlog, um, I went to dinner with my old boss Tracy Evans and her husband and I was telling you guys um, she owns the boutique that I worked at for several years y'all it's called Meow and Bart's Boutique it is a black owned boutique there's a physical store in Jacksonville Florida a showroom here in Atlanta and of course they are online um, and they've been in business for years and years and years and years and years and I have literally always been a fan um, just to give a little bit of background, I was actually introduced to Meow and Barts by way of one of my aunts. Her name is Shayla. Um, she was a stylist in our city in Jacksonville, Florida, and there was um, a news anchor. Her name was Carla Michelle, and Shayla was actually her stylist. And she would pull looks from Meow and Barks for Shayla's like segments and stuff. And um, not Shayla for Carla's segments. My aunt is Shayla. <laughs> And she um, started to let me like assist her because she knew I was like really into fashion as well as journalism, which I've told you guys before. And oh, quickly, I didn't even tell you. Y'all know I'm usually a NARS girl, but today I'm using Rare Beauty. So this is their foundation in the shade 400W. 
I love using this when I feel like super, super dry, which I have been feeling very dry lately. So um, I love this foundation because it is extremely hydrating because it's like oil based, it's oily. But if you are like a dry faced it girl like me, you will absolutely love it. And usually, I think I went a little overboard with how much I put on my face because usually I only need literally one drop like one little swipe of it will give me like all the coverage I need but today I'm doing the most so yeah but back to the story so she started to let me like assist her so she would like um pick me up and we would go to the boutique I hadn't met Tracy at this point yet because she was like really busy and like never there <laughs> whenever um Shayla and I would go pick up the clothes but then we would go pick up the clothes you know get to the station dress Carla all that stuff and I learned a lot from that experience but that was how I was like originally introduced to Meow and Bart's Boutique so we're gonna fast forward years past that so back in 2013 um yeah like 2013 my best friend and I Whitney um, I've shown y'all Whitney Whitney has been on the channel before but Whitney at the time was doing, um, Whitney can sew really well. So she was like pursuing a career in being a designer and she had a line called Wimig and it was like super cute. Um, we were like, you know, working, I was like working on it with her, not on the clothes, but on like ideas and like marketing tactics and stuff like that. And I wanted to open a boutique or I wanted to get into like fashion buying and merchandising and stuff. So we both decided that we were going to try to go to SCAD, which is the Savannah College of Art and Design. And we wanted to go to the Savannah location. I know I'm still blending this out, but I just want to make sure it's like good, good in my skin. Um, we wanted to go to the Savannah campus because there is also a campus here in Atlanta. And I think there is one in like France. And of course you can go to school online. So we started doing what we needed to do to get to SCAD. We applied, got accepted. Now y'all, once Whitney and I got accepted to SCAD, we were going to Savannah like literally once a week. Like we would switch off driving. Sometimes she would drive, sometimes I would drive to Savannah just to be in the city. We absolutely adore Savannah. Till, till today, Savannah is still like, in my top five cities in the US. On that list is also um, New Orleans, which is, I love New Orleans. We're gonna get into New Orleans. But um, yeah, so Savannah, we were going all the time, like preparing, we were gonna start in the spring. Of course, be roommates, get an apartment, all that stuff, right? So we started preparing for that. Um, then, but at the same time, y'all, <laughs> oh my God, y'all learn how to tell a story. I was, uh, I had kind of like took a break from college and I was working like a full-time job. I had acquired my associates at this point and I was working a full-time job at ADT, the security system company, y'all. And I was in the collections, um, the collections department, Whitney was working in billing. So we were in the same building, but on two different sides. So we were like, yeah, like we're going to quit our jobs, move to Savannah, go to SCAD, pursue our dreams, all these things. I think I was 21, I was 21, Whitney was 23, or she had turned 24, something like that. We're like a couple years apart. Anyway, so um, yeah, we started getting ready to go to SCAD, and then they wanted to do like the whole, you know, you gotta pay to go to school, it just is what it is. So we were gonna, um, I'm also using the Rare Beauty Concealer, this is in the shade 400W. This is like the bright, bright, bright one. There's one that's closer to my shade. I think I'm actually gonna use, I'm gonna use the one that's closer to my skin. I don't wanna be super bright today. Um, anyway, y'all. So uh, they wanted to do the whole financial aid thing, of course, cause you gotta pay to go to school. You can't just go for free. We had applied for, um, of course we did a FAFSA or whatever it's called, FAFSA, FAFSA. <laughs> um, and then, we also actually got scholarships, which was amazing. So our first like couple semesters would have been like taken care of completely. Our issue came down to housing. Um, we're full grown adults, y'all. But 
in order to go to SCAD, we would not have been able to like work in order to like take care of ourselves, go to school and um, stuff like that. And it just was too, it was too, it too much of an expense um, to ask our parents for like that type of help. Like, of course they were willing, but you know, parents have other responsibilities, other children, other stuff like that. So we made the decision to just not go. And it was a hard decision. It was really sad. Um, but we both have filed our way since then. But, you know, it was like, it was a hard decision for us at the time because we were so, like, I, I swear to y'all, we were so excited. Like, we had done all these things. As a matter of fact, Whitney pulled up this memory the other day. I'll insert it here. Uh, from when me and her went to, like, the um, orientation to be, like, new students, like, we had IDs and everything. Like I was gonna go, like I said, I was going to school for fashion merchandising and Whitney was going to school for design. So we were like super excited y'all. Um, but yeah, we couldn't go. So I continued working at ADT, but I was like, okay, I'm just gonna re-enroll in school, pursue my bachelor's. I did a very non-traditional route when it came to school y'all. Like if y'all haven't been able to tell by now, yeah, sis was all over the place. Um, but yeah, so I decided to re-enroll in school. I went to the University of North Florida, which is like um, a university just in my city in Jacksonville. And, you know, I worked and went to school or whatever. And I was just like still missing that part of me because all before working at ADT, I had always worked in retail. So like I worked at Hollister, Baker's, Aldo. Um, and so I was really missing like that piece of me, like fashion and style, even though I was still <laughs> pursuing um, a career in like communications or whatever. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to reach back into my little Rolodex of ideas. That don't even make sense. But I was like, you know, thinking like, what can I do to get back into like fashion? So I started blogging and I had a fashion blog and um, that was going well because I was able to mix like writing and fashion together which are two of the things that I just like love so much um, but that still wasn't like enough like I need to be doing something okay I needed something something and just one day on a whim I DM'd me Alan Barts and said hey like do y'all need an intern you know and I didn't know if she was gonna respond. Like I, I, you know, I did. I didn't know, but she responded, and I was shocked. I was so excited though because at this point, me Alan Barts was like doing amazing things in and out of the city. Tracy was always like so inspiring. But I, as I said, I had never got a chance to meet her because I was always in the boutique with my aunt, and she wasn't there. But you know, I just could tell from the way people spoke about the boutique even still to this day and everything that it was something that I was really you know interested in being a part of and I just wanted to let her know that you know I just had intentions to learn like I didn't want anything from her I just wanted to learn a little bit I think I am going to put a little bit of uh that brighter concealer under my eye just a little bit um so yeah so she was like okay uh, she gave me an assignment and told me to come in for like an interview. So my assignment was to do a style forecast and, you know, just to predict like upcoming trends, current trends, put some outfits together. And so y'all, I was like, all right, I can do that. So I used Polyvor. Please drop a red heart emoji in the comment section if you remember Polyvor. I don't even know if Polyvor is still around, but I used to spend so much time. That is way too much. <laughs> I used to spend so much time, it's me trying to wipe something off, on Polyvore putting outfits together. And to be also honest with y'all, that's how, that's one way I became quite familiar with a lot of like um, designer brands and stuff like that. So I went in with my stuff. I wonder if I still have it anywhere. I know it wouldn't be here. It's probably at my grandma's house if it's if I do still have possession of it. But I did like a printout, made it super cute, you know, did my graphic thing, and um, yeah, I put the I put the trends the trend forecast together. I think I put like kimonos. Mind y'all, it's like 2014 at this point. 
um, kimonos on there, monochromatic looks, um, blazers were like really, really popping. This is when people started, like women started to get back into sneakers heavily. I mean, we know that our women have always been into sneakers, black women, I'ma just be straight up. There's never not been a time where sneakers were not relevant in black culture. But this is when Instagram was popping a little bit more and like, you know, other cultures started to like dive a little bit heavier into like sneakers and stuff like that. So anyway, that was on like my trend forecast and she was like, you know, impressed with it and we had a conversation and um, she gave me a few days and she told me that I would um, have an assignment with her. And mind you, this is an internship, so not getting paid to be here i didn't even i didn't even care i just wanted to be around the industry i wanted to like learn from an expert and all of that and if i was gonna do it with anybody she was the one in my city tracy evans so <laughs> my first assignment with her was to do she was getting ready to do she does these segments on the local news um where you know she does live trend forecasting with the clothes from the boutique and she have models like live models she styled them and stuff from the boutique and you know they would put on a show for the news and so she asked me to come assist her with that so i showed up to the news channel like i was asked to i did what i was supposed to do and um i really don't want to be weird but literally y'all ever since that day we've been like this like ever since that day i just never really like you know left the boutique and left her side so i started going to the boutique a couple times out of the week to intern you know doing different things around the boutique as far as like steaming the clothes unpackaging stuff i learned a lot about running a boutique <laughs> a lot about running a business like so 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 much she was teaching me so much and i just really appreciate her for pouring into me because Y'all, she, she didn't have to do that. You know what I mean? But I really appreciate it because I just really missed fashion. And at the level I was learning and what I was learning, like, oh my God. Like, I swear. And I will get to this, but it really, really has a lot to do with, like, the connections I have now and where I am now in life and career and stuff like that. Even in Atlanta, to be completely honest, like. I would, I would have still, you know, tried to make it here, but I don't know if I would be here like right now with the way I moved here if it wasn't for me, Alan Barks and Tracy. So, um, let's keep the story going. My second, um, like assignment with her, like major assignment was the Essence Festival. She was like, you know, I've been at the Essence Festival every year. She literally packs up the whole boutique, takes it to New Orleans. We set up and we sell the clothes just like we're at home in the store every single year so i've been to essence festival every single year from 2014 up until literally 2020 and COVID was the reason 2020 2021 right 2021 or was it 2020 2020 god dang i'm all over the place with my years so 2020 2019 was my last time at the Essence Festival. Goodness. Uh, so I went back to back, you know, with Miss Tracy and everything. And it was always like such an amazing experience. That's why New Orleans is in my favorite cities. And shout out to my homegirl, Maja. I love her. Um, she's from New Orleans. But um, I finally got a chance to experience New Orleans without the Essence Festival because um my friend Deandra and I went to New Orleans to visit Masha for her birthday a couple years ago. So I was able to like get the feel for New Orleans without it being like a lot going on. Because usually it is a lot going on because it's the S Festival and so it's a lot of people there. And you still get the you still get a feel for the city, obviously, because that's how I fell in love with it. But to be there with, with just the people, just the culture and just the city is a totally different experience so y'all i'm contouring also with the rare beauty concealer why am i losing my mind and i'm using the foundation brush this brush is so good by the way like i only ever use it with my rare beauty products but i was watching a video the other day and i saw a girl using it to contour with so that's me trying stuff today and y'all know i'm not a beauty guru i'm not a makeup guru i do my makeup based on what my skill level and how I like it to look so 
I just be trying stuff. But yeah, y'all, so um, there's that. <laughs> and so I was, you know, just working with Miss Tracy, learning. And in the midst of all of that, y'all, we became like family. Like I really consider like her and, um, you know, Mr. Corey and even like her sisters and her brothers. Like we, it, it's kind of like family. Not only that, like we, um, I was living with my grandma and... They lived like in the same neighborhood. Like she didn't live, she lived less than 10 minutes away. Um, which was always so cool too. But uh, let's just get deeper into the story. So outside of me working at the boutique, Miss Tracy had always put me on to like the best opportunities y'all. So I told y'all we did like trend forecasting at the news station. And we didn't just do that that one time. That was like an ongoing thing. So we did it there. We even did it here in Atlanta one time. Oh my gosh, like <laughs> we were doing it for, I think I think it's CBS 46. That's sad, I live here and don't know the station. It wasn't Fox 5 though, <laughs> but it was like CBS 46, I believe. But I'll put like pictures and stuff up. But, um, cause at that time, by that time she had opened the showroom here in Atlanta and it's in Buckhead, so there's that. But, um, she was also doing the styling for a natural hair care brand. And um, I was always her assistant on set. And I developed a really, really great relationship with the team from the brand. Um, and I was doing like influencer work with them. And also y'all, of course, if you know, you know <laughs> what brand I'm talking about. Um, yeah, I ended up actually working for them or working with them for, um, years uh doing like social media and community management which i um really enjoy for what it for what i learned working with them and everything um and i was able to establish like amazing relationships in fact i know i talk about my friend maja a lot but the way i even met maja um are you guys familiar with the world natural hair show see, see COVID has really thrown me off with like trade shows and events and stuff because it's been so long since we've done anything like that dang i'm getting makeup on my shirt i sure am and the reason i'm doing make i'm doing my shirt i mean <laughs> i'm doing my makeup wearing this shirt is because it's such a high turtleneck and i just know i would struggle putting my clothes on on top of my makeup but yeah uh yeah so yeah i was saying COVID has really thrown me off like i'm not i feel like i'm not familiar with all the shows and events like i used to be because i used to go to all of them for work i can't even remember anymore it's sad um i call it COVID brain and today y'all i really want to try this um cream blush finally because i bought it and i have not tried it yet i think i'm scared i don't know i'm scared this is the makeup by mario in the shade um earthy pink so we're gonna try this blush i'll we'll see i feel like we need to be quiet for this no because i was telling y'all how i met maja i'm gonna i'm gonna start with a little bit but yeah so the world natural hair show it came and we had to work um with the brand well i didn't have to work miss tracy invited me to go so i was like of course and it was here in atlanta so i was like you know it's, I, I always loved coming to atlanta i was just like any opportunity to go to atlanta I'm gonna go you know what I mean so I came up here and I saw this girl with this beautiful beautiful fro and I had to go up to her and let her know like sis I love your hair and it was Maja and <laughs> we connected and um I think we started following each other on Instagram yeah we started following each other on Instagram and we would just kind of talk like on Instagram and everything and then we um like she would come up here for this event we used to both go to that was ran by Blavity in 2190 called uh, Summit 21. So like I would come up here and she would be here too. Matter of fact, even before that, because I told y'all Maja from New Orleans, she's also in the same like industry as me. So she was like working with another hair care brand and we were both in New Orleans at the same time for like Essence Festival and we saw each other then. And she still had that same like beautiful, beautiful hair. Um, 
And matter of fact, we were both at uh, Trap Karaoke one night in New Orleans and I like performed Bodak Yellow. <laughs> oh my gosh, y'all, that was so embarrassing. I mean, it went well, it was fun, but oh my God. Um, I kind of like this, it's real light, it's cute though. But um, yeah, so that's how I, I did meet Maja. I don't even know if that made sense, but I kind of I kind of met her by way of Meow and Bart's in a sense. So I always like appreciate Miss Tracy for that because she definitely brought me, you know, together with one of my now most closest friends. Maja is one of my closest friends, by the way. Give me one second. So yeah, working at Meow and Bart's, I was able to learn a lot, create a family, because like I said, we're like, family there um meet so many people y'all from like us to, from celebrities to like major ceos and all kind of things i've just been in spaces that like i just feel like otherwise i wouldn't have been in like if it wasn't for me um my connection with miss tracy and the boutique and just how she just like truly truly mentored me so i know i was saying i always i, I refer to her as a mentor but we never established that because i do know that like mentorships require you know i think both parties have to like agree to that or something like that it was always kind of like an unspoken thing um but yeah she definitely 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 um contributed a lot to my growth as like a young woman and everything because y'all i used to be so like down about I told y'all I did like a non-traditional route when it came to like college. I used to be so like hard on myself about that and like down on myself about not going to like an HBCU and then like not being able to go to SCAD because I would have gone to an HBCU. I wanted to. In fact, I wanted to go to Spelman. But once like I put SCAD in my, um, what mama? Y'all, my dog is down here begging for something once i put scad in my mind it's like i didn't think about any other options like no other options like it was scad or nothing for me um you know i was just kind of down about that and i had gotten behind in school and behind in a lot of things just solely you know having like lack of direction and all this other stuff but my life definitely came full circle because of me on Barts and Miss Tracy and I just always appreciate that even the connections I have with like people here in Atlanta um it's just been amazing and she like loves my family like my family knows her my sisters my mama I think my dad I think my daddy met Miss Tracy <laughs> uh my grandma knows her you know like they buy stuff from the store I purchase stuff for them from the store and everything like it's um come here mama what y'all the camera start recording but i think georgia wanted to say hi say hello you gotta go though okay now i gotta wash my hands because i'm touching you i don't want to touch my makeup but you so cute hold up y'all i gotta wash my hands <laughs> okay we are back i had to go clean up a little bit because i was playing with my dog again my dog is clean but you know still just hygiene i'm touching my makeup and stuff like that but um yeah so I'm gonna go in with some liquid highlighter today. Something else I've been playing with. Um, this is Mesmerized by Rare Beauty. It's like a pretty little rose gold color. I'm not gonna use a lot, and I have used this before, but still. And I'm just gonna put it like right here. And then take my, the same beauty blender that I was using for my concealer and just like blend it out real quick. Cause I just want like a light little glow right there. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to see what else I can tell you guys. Because of course, there, there are just some things that I can't quite, quite say just because I've signed like NDAs and things of that nature um, for like my job. And so I wish I could just like spill the beans. But um, if this story does not seem to like make sense, I do apologize. I just really wanted to give like more of a backstory to that vlog because I was very emotional in that vlog. And I was telling you guys like working there really did change my life oh i didn't even mention the fact that when it once it transitioned from like an internship to a job <laughs> oh my god i'm terrible at telling stories i promise i'm gonna get better at this even if i have to write everything down first um 
but yeah so at one point like i was saying i was just interning there um i did have another job i was working at aldo again part-time so i was going to school working at aldo and then i would spend like maybe like Friday and Saturday at the boutique, interning and everything, so like learning. And anytime we would go out of town to travel, I would always go. Um, so yeah, once I had been there long enough and she could see that I was like committed to it and I love the boutique and everything, she was just like, you know, I wanna go ahead and hire you. And I was like so excited, because again, I wasn't looking for anything out of this. Um, I really just appreciated her time and her just like we all we have to do this every time there's always something in my mascara <laughs> I just appreciated her time and her like you know teaching me things so I was really shocked but of course I accepted the offer and I began working there as like the manager um <laughs> so I did all kind of stuff once I became manager I was able to like package orders because of course people were ordering online um dropping them off at the post office um opening and closing the store because I had keys at this point and you know just more responsibility I was also kind of like putting stuff up on our social media like our Instagram stories and making graphics we were also like host events we would have like happy hours um random sales all kind of stuff and what I love so much about being able to work in a space like that is having like 100% autonomy and control over your business um, is one thing that I just admire and like it's why I haven't been able to get a traditional job because I don't know how to leave a space like that and I worked at Meow and Barts for so long um, probably like oof, five years uh, I worked there from 2014 up until 2019 which is when I officially graduated college and moved to Atlanta at the end of 2019 I was still working at Meow and Bars even up to the week that I moved here you feel me like I've been there for a minute so they are seriously like family to me um and so my sister told me to freaking order a mascara guard to keep myself from getting mascara on my skin y'all think i did it yet and i definitely made an amazon order last night i should have put it in my cart kai don't kill me i'm gonna order it tonight um and i wonder if it's gonna be in my if it can come in my package that's coming next week so yeah y'all um there's that and the other really grand opportunity that I just love, love, love from my time at Meow and Bart's is New York Fashion Week. Y'all, I had never been to New York before, but I've now gone twice because of Meow and Bart's. And y'all know I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. Like, we're the largest city land wise, but as far as like culture, activity, don't nothing be going on in Jacksonville. Like, if anybody ever tells you that Jacksonville is boring, believe them, they're not lying to you. They're not lying. Um, it's not really a lot to do there. Like, it's a great city. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna trash talk it. Need a sip of water. You know, like I love it because my family is there and everything, but I personally feel like I'm too big of a dreamer to be there. And me and Miss Tracy talk about that all the time, which is something that you know she has felt before because she has I ain't trying to tell her business, but she has also moved here to Atlanta before and back to Jacksonville. But you know, now she has a store here too, so she can do what she wants either way um so yeah New York was like a dream like who don't want to go to New York <laughs> I grew up watching sets in the city you know I've always just heard that New York was for dreamers and movies and shows and so being from the south I just never like saw myself going until I was quite much older and I could just like you know pay for it for myself but you know she um she brought up the idea of New York Fashion Week. We did like a whole installation there. Um, I learned about like getting sponsorships for events, running full blown trade shows, shows, events, all that stuff um, just from working there. And so we, we did it and we attended shows. Of course, we've done we did like photo shoots, um, parties, of course, I have tried all kind of restaurants. Um, and this is not to like brag this is just to show you that like or just to just kind of tell you that like all of these opportunities all of this 
and everything that I have been able to accomplish today, you know, it came from a black owned business. Black woman owned business. Cause she decided to take a chance on me. She didn't have to bring me into, you know, her world. This is her dream. I'm lining my lips with chestnut, of course. Um, yeah, this is her dream and I just feel so blessed to just be like, you know, a part of it and still a part of it to this day. So, you know, there's that. So when I was saying that in that blog that Meow and Barks has changed my life and I was referring to like Miss Tracy as a mentor and all those things, that's why. Because she, she really has, you know, her and her business have truly changed my life and just because I didn't, I don't know what I would be, I don't know what I would be doing. Like me at my, when I was in my early, early 20s, now I'm 29 y'all. And the way I was working, a lot of people can't say that they've had those opportunities. Like, you know, being on set, some of the things that I have experienced, I just sit and think about it sometimes. Like I have so much to be grateful for. And, um, outside of just like tangible experiences and things it's just about the fact that i definitely am a part of something much bigger than me a part of her legacy and she says she said that to me and i cried because it was just really heartwarming because i just really appreciate that and you know i learned a lot of small things there too like the importance of a steamer she was so big on like not having wrinkles in the clothes on the clothes on display and in the stuff that we were shipping out. Y'all know when y'all get stuff from different places you order online. I'm just rechecking my lipstick. And it's like the stuff might be wrinkled. But you if you have a steamer at home, you can take care of it. But even it's even better if they steam it before they ship it to you. So I learned about fabric, sizing, stretching. Um, you know, so it's just been so it's just been such a blessing and i just wanted to tell you guys about my experience working with miss tracy if you are from jacksonville which i know i do have some subscribers from jacksonville who saw that vlog and they were like they could vouch for the fact that miss tracy is definitely one of the sweetest people um now she don't play by her business there were rules i'm not just saying i was just running around doing whatever i wanted to do but i definitely did establish a lot of autonomy over like what I want to do as far as making money as far as my career she showed me what was possible and the fact that like you can run a business be super fly like you can have you can have it all and you can be black and have it all like it was just it was just so many things it was just a wonderful experience and I still miss working there you know which is why I'm so grateful that she still considers me to be like part of the Meow and Bart's family and to be honest with y'all I talk to her like every day. We are always sending each other ignorant memes on Instagram, texting, keeping up. Um, what, Georgia? Get down. Sit. Sit. This dog. You know, like we keep in touch. And I appreciate that because I love that lady. <laughs> I really, really, really do. And I just really appreciate her for letting me be a part of her team. You know what I mean? And so I just hope that I can do the same for someone for a young black girl in the future one day and something she always used to say is like because we were in, we were located um in san marco which is not the most like urban area in jacksonville so you know sometimes we would experience a little bit of racism <laughs> a little bit of like people would be shocked to walk into the store and see that it was owned by you know black people or see just nothing but black people and we were unapologetically black meaning anytime because i wasn't the only staff member we had like other um employees and everything they would all be black <laughs> um all the models on the instagram page always black on the website always black we would we would celebrate black holidays <laughs> in the store we play like anything we want to listen to like we were in there listening to we listen to y'all anything juvenile megan the stallion um current Oh, like it didn't matter like we were in there being ourselves unapologetically and so I just really appreciated that because I told y'all I was in my feelings heavy about having not attended an HBCU because most certainly if it wasn't SCAD I was gonna go to Spelman like <laughs> that's what I always had in my mind so when I ended up at UNF I was just like dang am I ever gonna be around my own people 
<laughs> but y'all being at meow and bart's really really did like i couldn't have asked for a better experience so yeah <laughs> so i hope that made sense um if y'all have any questions or like comments of course leave them in the comment section below um be sure to shop and support me on barks um everything will be listed in the description box and i hope this story inspires y'all i hope it made sense because i'm i'm clearly terrible at telling stories but i'm gonna get better okay i'm gonna get better i'm just not used to like telling a story in front of the camera but i really wanted to share this with y'all because as we get into the new year and i told y'all i want to be a little more candid and talk to you guys a little bit more about like my life and my journey and i didn't want y'all to think this this <laughs> that miss tracy just bought me some red bottoms just because like no we have a very long line of just being in each other's lives and i've probably helped her as much as she has helped me but all i can say is that it just really changed my life my outlook on things like I dream I dream different now like I've always had dreams of course um, and I've always wanted to do things but y'all I really mm, it's so crazy to say like I transitioned from working it's I, I've transitioned out of meow and barks to working for myself because I was able to believe in entrepreneurship full on like I do social media management I'm like running a whole agency on my own but I don't know if I thought I wasn't thinking I could do that <laughs> before working there like I didn't see the possible I could I, uh, I could just see it's just different now and I don't want to be weird and be like you know black owned businesses and a black owned, black entrepreneurship is it's definitely at its height right now and I do think that you know with the help of social media there are way more black owned businesses than ever before but even before that was like for lack of better words, a trend. I've always had Meow and Barks. And it has always been there even before I started working there. So I'm just truly amazed at how far I've come. Because I met her and I started working with her. I was 21. I'm 29 now. So we almost looking at a decade long relationship. And I just truly, truly appreciate her leadership yeah so if you see this miss tracy i love you girl and i'll talk to you soon and thank you guys so much for watching make sure you like comment and subscribe and i will see you in my next video bye